Hey friends, Christine Weir. I am a five-star legacy diamond. I'm married to a diamond and I am an emerald on my re-entry account. Needless to say, leader development is super important to me and one of my greatest passions. I love seeing people succeed. I love pouring into people and I love developing leaders. So let's talk about that today. You heard from Eva Schmidt at the beginning of this series, and she cast a beautiful vision of leader legs. Then we heard from Brooke, Brooke Hemingway. He was talking to us about getting leaders started off strong and that no one goes alone. Then we heard from Jen Cobb last week talking about strategy and data and how to use that for rank ups. Today, I just want to build on that. And I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the things that I have done over the last 10 years to develop leaders and develop a strong organization where we all rise together. So first and foremost, I would tell you that you want to be working with winners. And what do I mean by that? Well, I remember Brittany Howard saying in a training that she did that you wanna make sure that you are choosing people to develop in your organization that you like that you enjoy, that fill your cup, because those are the exact people that you're gonna be spending your vacations with when you are in Emerald Extravaganza in Maui or another area of Hawaii or Mexico, or when you are in the Diamond Destination, you're gonna be spending your vacations with those people. So make sure that you're developing people that you enjoy. I couldn't agree more with that statement. But also, you wanna make sure that as you are looking for potential leaders within your organization, that you are looking for people that have the same or like-minded values that you have. And so I'm gonna share with you three of my top values or characteristics that I look for in my leaders. And the first one is a non-negotiable. You have to have personal integrity. I only work with people that have integrity, that are ethical people, because that's the people that I wanna spend time with. Number two, I look for people who are truly coachable. I would say 99% of people say they're coachable, when in reality, most people are not coachable because they're not willing to do the hard things that are required to grow. So you want to find somebody or some people that are willing to have those conversations, acknowledge what, where they need to grow, and then they're willing to take action on those things. And number three, super important to me, and that is I'm looking for people that take initiative. And what I mean by that is they see something that needs to be done and they do it. They don't wait for perfection. They don't wait to know all of the things. They don't wait to be told. They see it and they take action on it. And what I have noticed in the last 10 years is that people that have integrity, are coachable, and take initiative are super successful leaders, especially within my organization. And so those are very, very important to me. Now you may be thinking of a characteristic that you would add to that, or maybe you would sub one out, and that's totally fine. The important thing is, is that you are bringing people to you and together that are, are aligning with your focus, with your values, because if, they're, if they are aligning with your values and your characteristics that are important, they're going to align with each other. And it is really important to me to create a collaborative environment where we can all grow together. I talked about this on a Zoom at the beginning of the month, um, but one of the things that's really so important to me is relationships. And I love finding the strengths of people. I love finding what their natural talents are, what their giftings are, and then getting them leading within those strengths from the beginning. I don't wait for people to get a rank or sign up a bunch of people before I start pouring into them belief, belief on what they can do. In fact, I typically point out the strengths of people that I see before they ever join me because I want that to start swimming in their head. I want to start building their confidence from the very moment that I talk to them and I like to point out the good qualities that I see in people. When you first bring people in and you notice this person is super organized, you guys let them lead out in that. 
I see this person makes beautiful graphics. They're just naturally talented in that. Or I see that this person knows how to create reels or a story. Let them train on that. This person just naturally can share their story so well. Let them do it on the team page. Find ways to empower people from the very beginning and they will begin to rise up and feel confident. So they will lead faster. You don't have to wait for them to have a certain rank um, before they get involved. The other thing that I will talk to you about today is something that has been, it's, it's instrumental in my success and the success of so many on my team, and that is accountability. Um, this is something where, I'm just gonna use Jessica Heffley's quote, leaders are not avoiders, and say that this is when you become and step into leadership. When you are willing to hold people accountable for what they said they would do and what they said they were wanting to do. And what I mean by that is you don't entertain a lot of excuses, right? And you are able to have communication with the people. You might have to have hard conversations in leadership. In fact, you're not maybe going to, you're going to have to have hard conversations if you are a true leader. And sometimes that is around accountability. In 2017, I started a weekly accountability call for my leaders. And at that time, it was for Ruby and Up. And we would meet once a week. I would do coaching. I would do training. We would do book studies together. We would pray together. We would share struggles together. We would work together. And I have seen so many people from that 2017 group rise up to jewel. You guys, I know it works because I've been doing it ever since. I still hold an accountability call on Monday nights for my top leaders to come together. Those people that want to do the things that are willing to get outside their comfort zones. It's no longer just for Ruby and up. And I know that this works because this is what I've been doing for all of those years. We also show our work. So this might sound super elementary to you, kind of like a worksheet, but I developed a winning day sheet several years ago that we've been using ever since with massive success. I actually had a gold at that time who had developed all the way to Emerald within 14 months by using this sheet and doing it seven days a week um, or doing seven sheets a week. So maybe she did two on one day or whatever. But anyway, I know it works and I'm happy to share this with you. If you already have one that you are using, please keep using it. Don't jump to shiny and new. If what you're doing is working, keep doing it. The only time you change or shift is when you feel like these things aren't working anymore. You gotta be flexible, you gotta be moldable, but don't jump for the shiny and new. So if you already have something that works, please keep using it. But if you're one of those people that you're like, I've never seen anything like this, I don't know what this is then maybe this is for you and maybe you can use it to grow your business. Um, we are accountable to our group. So we post our work each week. We talk about our work each week and we get together in community each week on a Zoom. Um, is it a sacrifice? Absolutely. It's a sacrifice of time, um, but it's only one hour. And is it a sacrifice of my time as the leader? Yes, it is. I've been sacrificing that hour since 2017. Do I regret sacrificing it? No, because I truly believe that it is one of the biggest factors in my team's success over time. And it's not just about getting on for a training call. It's not just about doing the winning day sheet and posting it. It's about the community of people that we have coming together. I truly believe that the quote, um, a rising tide lifts all ships, is completely true. I've watched it happen in my business. When you come together and you link arms with people with a common goal, a common mindset, and no excuses, you're going to see that all ships begin to rise. And it's so beautiful. So you might be on this call thinking, well, that's great for you, because <laughs> you have all these people that are jumping on. But I wanna encourage you, if you're a silver, if you're a senior silver, if you're a gold and you've got one or two people, you guys pick a common time, get on a Zoom, 
and do some work together. Even if you don't know how to train anybody, even if you don't know how to lead anybody, start with just working together. Then go to, let's listen to this podcast and get on and discuss it. That is how you create community of leaders. And then let somebody else lead the next call. That's how you're going to rise people up and you're going to get people involved in the process. I also want to encourage you that engaging with your leaders and affirming them is so important. Is this a business? Absolutely. It's a business. It's not sorority. It's not social club. It's a business. But this is a relationship business. You need to see what the giftings and strengths of your people are. You need to affirm what you see them doing. You need to lift them up. You need to celebrate them and you need to invest in them. That might be an investment of time, like an accountability call or a coaching call. That might be an investment of resources where you're traveling and you are doing sip and sees with them, sip and shares with them, where you are getting together with a group of people for dinner just to build the community and build relationships. Whatever it is, it's an investment, but it is so important to be engaging with your people. And I remember it was around the time that I went diamond seeing Tamara Holloway host this retreat and I'd never seen anybody do it. And I was like, I want to do that. Like as soon as I go diamond, I am planning a retreat and I did. And I've held retreats ever since then. And I know not all leaders want to do a retreat. I know that's not everybody's gifting or everybody's love language. It's mine though. I love it. And what I have seen come from that is these solid relationships where people come together and they build a bond and it's beautiful and they celebrate each other and they encourage each other on the side and they're the ones cheering when that person's winning or this person's winning. There's no drama. There's no jealousy. It's just a community of beauty. That's really what it is. And so maybe you're a person and you're like, well, that's great because you're a diamond. You can afford to do retreats. Well, first of all, I would tell you when you build up a leadership group, then you guys can start doing it together. As you build up jewels, you can start doing these things together. But also, we have this cool thing coming up called convention, and that is your opportunity. You guys, get your team there. If you're a goal, get all your people there. Pile in a room, four people in a room, split the cost, do what you have to do to get to convention. I will never forget... This was my first year in Plexus, hearing Alec Clark, who is the biggest family man you will ever meet in your life, saying, I don't care what you do, have to do. I don't care if, if you have to sell your mattress, get to convention. And that stuck with me. That's how important it is. And yes, it's important to be part of the culture of Plexus. It's part, it's, it's totally important to be there to, for the excitement. But do you know what it really is important to be there for? To assemble your community, to build those bonds to create those relationships and build on them. You guys get together with the people that you want to be on the beach with when you become a jewel. Pour in to the people that are meeting the values that you think are important. Continue to have those conversations with people about accountability be willing to get people outside their comfort zone. You guys, I know we think that by keeping people comfortable, we're being kind, but hear me out on this. If you are keeping someone small because you don't wanna tell them that they need to tweak their social media or that maybe they need to do this or what if they did this, encouraging them to come into an accountability group, pushing them just a little bit outside their comfort zone. If you think you're being kind by telling them you can work your business five minutes a day and be a diamond, that's not kindness. We have to set people up for the truth and this business does require work. Leaders are not avoiders. Thank you, Jessica Heffley. They're not. We can't avoid the truth. We have to tell people what it really takes. And then we have to be willing to walk beside them while they're doing it, cheering for them, supporting them, empowering them. So I wanna encourage you today, we're gonna do a couple action items. 
Number one, I have these written down, hang on. Number one, I want you to identify your top three most important characteristics in potential leaders. I want you to write them down. And then if you have leaders already on your team, I want you to think about those leaders and see if they are in alignment with those top three core values. Number two, I want you to think about some type of accountability that you can put in place for April. I wanna know what it is. So tell me what you're gonna do. Are you gonna get on a weekly Zoom with your team? Are you gonna start implementing some type of plan? Are you going to share how they can get into income producing activities? Are you gonna get in a chat group if you don't have one of those? What is some form of, of accountability that you're willing to put in place for April? Number three, I want you to choose five to seven of your leaders to personally affirm. I want you to handwrite them a letter or a card. It, does, it can be four sentences long, but I want you to affirm in that card what you see in them, what you recognize as their giftings and values, and why you think they can be successful. And then I want you to mail it to them. And if you don't have five to seven leaders yet, then I want you to think of five friends that you have. Maybe they're not even in Plexus. And I want you to affirm them for who you see they are. Because honestly, there's not enough of that good stuff going on. So if you don't have five to seven leaders, do the alternative. And lastly, I want you to evaluate how you are empowering your current team. What are you doing? What tools are you providing? What opportunities are you providing for them to help them get started? How are you engaging your team and lifting them up? You guys, there's freedom in what I'm about to say to you. As the leader, you are not responsible for people's success. You don't get to take credit for their success. If you can't take credit for their success, you also don't get to take credit for their failure. Learned that from Jen Hawkins. You provide the opportunity for them. They have to take the action. We are all adults here and we all have to be responsible and accountable for our own goals and dreams. We have to take the action, the steps, to become leaders, to successfully rise up more leaders. So today I wanna to empower you that you can do it. Start where you are and move forward. If you have any questions, um, please drop them in the comments and I will hop back on later with my live and I'm happy to answer them. I don't think I showed you this yet. This is my prize. It is a Kate Spade crossbody and I can't wait to give that to one of you. You guys have a great day and I'll see you in a little bit.